up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Mula Rick Flair, huh? Showing out like Bianca Belair, huh? Best podcast, flush it in the air, huh? From the rings and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw them up, lay it down just like Matt Amari. Wrestling little half ups, gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every weekend, it's feeling like a party. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Wrestling Rehab Up. And um, I'm back. The rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. And just like Eric Bischoff, I am back and better than e ever. So, and if I'm Eric Bischoff, then the people I have with me today, I have the Vince McMahon of RHAP, Mr. Rob Cesarnino. Rob, how's it going? I'm not going to say you're fired to anybody, okay? okay. Uh, very happy to be here, Mari. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this uh, for weeks, so so happy to have to be here. I'm just so uh, curious that, you know, I feel like that this storyline of Matt's here one week, then mm -hmm. you're here one week, uh, that is, is the tag team turning on each other? Stay tuned to find out. Stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> and if we have the Vince McMahon of the podcast, then of course, I think this next man can aptly be named the uh, Shane McMahon of the podcast. My son. <laughs> <laughs> back, for, back for the fifth or fourth time. Uh, great for the podcast, Chappelle, aka C Dog. Chappelle, what's up? I thought you were going to call me the Dexter Loomis of the podcast because I got fired. <laughs> no, um, uh, Vince has fired Shane multiple times. And then no, like, okay. And Shane just comes back. He just pops up randomly mm -hmm. and comes back. So I feel like oh. this is real apt. Yeah, that's fitting. That's fitting. Also, can I just give a shout out to Isaiah and your theme song? It is so yes, good. Yes, please. It's so good. Yeah. Right? Good it's song. so yeah. pumped up. Yes. Yeah. It looked like The Rock because I'm driving a Ferrari. I was like, yes, Isaiah, yes. Yeah, yes. that guy's good. <laughs> love it. I love it. I'm so glad to have you guys. Matt is, of course, greatly missed. Um, <laughs> like I said, with him, he he said he had the Mari counter. He had like the how many times he's going to talk about me. With me, it's let's count how many times I messed this, this up. Like the production will <laughs> not be as smooth i'm giving y'all a fair warning right here right now um uh, i don't know if the right picture is gonna pop up i don't know if i'm gonna have anything pop up we'll see but of course matt is greatly greatly missed but i'm so glad i could have my my two my two co-hosts here the the hosts of uh, nothing but netflix podcast uh rob what has been have you what has been your interest over the past few months it's been it's been a year since we caught up with you uh have you been paying attention to wwe so much so much i i have been uh just uh basically absorbing so much wwe over these last couple of months that my son dominic and a little bit uh my younger son anthony uh, that we are way into it. And uh, we started, we are playing the WWE 2K22 video game, but we have been watching like every single Royal Rumble over yes. these past uh, couple of months that we're watching a lot of the old pay-per-views uh, that oh, wow. he is like a real, like uh, become a real historian uh, trying to go back and learn everybody's names, everybody's finishing moves and everything like that. And so I, I will say that keeping up with Raw and SmackDown every week is a commitment. Uh, I end up like yeah. catching more highlights than being there for the full three hours of Raw or mm -hmm. two hours of SmackDown. But I'm very excited to be here and uh, get to talk to an adult about what's happening in <laughs> WWE. I, I famously do not watch Raw uh, live, so mm -hmm. I, I get it. I did watch it live this week. I basically had no choice. But yeah, I, I completely get it. That is why we are here. That's why you pay us the big bucks, which, which you know, that's why that's why people listen to us. So you don't have to watch it. You can just listen to us. Chappelle, how about you? What you been up to? Uh, you know me. I, I like keeping up with the drama of the wrestling. So I'm all in on wrestling oh, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all on your timeline, checking it out. But I don't actually watch wrestling. I just listen to y'all talk about it. So these, I love coming on here because that's when I actually sit down and watch the matches. I'm like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this is what they meant. Uh, but no, it's a good time. And I'm happy to hear this about Dominic as well because when I was a kid, that's who I was. I was Mr. Like, give, uh -huh. me the, give you the stat sheet of all the wrestlers. I can tell you like which wrestler on WCW should be on WWF winning. Mm -hmm. Like, I like. 
I had picked my side back then, you know? Uh, so it's fun to be the historian and be able to do callbacks to that. And I hope that uh, magic doesn't go away anytime soon for Dominic. But exactly. for me, I think y'all have reinvigorated that in me a little bit too. Yeah. Thank you. And we definitely get um, a lot of uh, emails and, and DMs saying that. So uh, shout out to all the listeners. And we're so glad if you listen to us and we pulled you back in or, you know, or you're just listening through us. We really appreciate it no matter what. Yeah. And um, can I add, add something that I have? I uh, just owe uh, such a debt of gratitude to Matt and Mari, because uh, when you two first had the idea for the wrestling wrap up, that you know, uh, when we started uh, having the show on, I said this is going to be great because then uh, that I hope that this will one day turn into that you know my kids will get into wrestling and uh, that we'll be <laughs> yeah, able to did. talk about it. <laughs> and and I've been so happy uh, because it's it's really like one of the most fun things going on in my life right now is uh -huh. uh, getting to watch uh, like uh, all this uh, WWE with my son. And it's something that I always dreamed of happening. And I feel like that I owe uh, so much of it to uh, you and Matt doing the podcast, because I think that that's, uh, you know, a, a big reason why I wanted to, you know, uh, like, you know, re really push to like, you know, get into it because you had the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Robin. We we appreciate that. And, and one day we'll we'll have Dominic's hot takes. I'll I'll ask you a little bit earlier, and then we can get Dominic's hot takes on on the show mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm so happy to hear that. Let's just jump into a little bit of news before we get into the um, Hell in a Cell preview. Uh, in in the column of uh, not shocked at all, um, WWE may have um, reportedly already cut their uh, women's tag team tournament. Hmm, who could have saw that coming? Oh wait, everybody, <laughs> including <laughs> Sasha and Naomi, who like all this does is further prove the point that they did not care about the division. They weren't pushing the division. They weren't building up people in the division. So the moment me and Matt talked about it, so the moment that they they stripped the titles from Sasha and Naomi and then planned said, oh, we're gonna have a tournament. We said with who, with what, with where, where are they at. And look, look where we're at now. All of a sudden, it's like it's not on TV. They they haven't said a peep about it. Um, if if I could guess, I'm I'm guessing that they're trying to probably call every single, <laughs> every single like retired. <laughs> like, <women's laughs> they're they're like, where are the belt twins at? And the belt is like, oh, like, and and it's not working out. Um, Chappelle, what do you think about this uh, drama? You know how I feel about mm -hmm. Vince McMahon and this whole situation. <laughs> but like you said, what what who are you gonna call? Like that's that's the whole point. That's the whole point. You don't give these women tag teams or we women wrestlers like a lot of opportunities. And then when you go mm -hmm. to try to do something like this, they don't have anybody to fill those spots. So I don't I'm not shocked. Uh, but I think they're probably gonna try to blame this on, you know, Naomi and um sasha and be like oh well since they did this now we can't do what we wanted to do they're never going to just own up to the fact that this was never something that was set up for these women to do well you know like mm -hmm. this was never going to fill that spot that they claimed that they were trying to fill so i'm not shocked i'm more annoyed than anything and i'm waiting on uh naomi and sasha to come back like Same. i need this to happen right rob how about you yeah i really feel like that there's been like a a consolidation of the women's division that it's uh interesting that uh, i'm sure we'll talk about with the hell in the cell that we have uh, basically this uh three-way title but i mean i feel like that i mean i think that this is basically the entire women's division in uh <laughs> one match uh you know ronda rousey is around somewhere uh right. she's not even in hell in the cell uh, right I, honestly i couldn't even tell you, right uh, now are there smackdown women's tag team champions so no, so like so that's the thing. The belts, those belts were float belts. They float between Raw and SmackDown, and uh. that's what yeah, that's what Sasha and Naomi were doing. They were defending on both, um, on on both shows, and not only just defending, they were doing like like setup matches, like one of them versus another person on the team, and all that Raw and SmackDown, Raw and SmackDown, and it was the simple fact that they weren't getting um, title opportunities like on the pay per view, and there that there was no long term booking plans for them as tag team champions was one of the main reasons they they walked out, and so. It, this is to me at this point, it's like WWE knew they were in the wrong. It's like when you're in that when you're in a relationship, you have a fight, 
one person knows they're in the wrong, but instead of like apologizing, they double down and then they get to a point where they've doubled down so much that they are like, oh, I, I know I messed up, but you can't go back. It's like they they stripped them. They announced this tournament. They're like, you know, we'll we'll show them. And then at this point, it's now. But now y'all look bad because Sasha and Naomi have been pretty much chill. Mom's the word on it. Sasha's just been out partying. Um, hopefully Naomi's doing good. She hasn't really um, put anything out on social media, but they haven't said a word. And I think at, they don't need to because the way it's looking is like WWE is just really telling on themselves. So, um, yeah, for I couldn't. There was no SmackDown like the reported card like right now as it stands has <laughs> like no SmackDown matches so we're you know full disclosure we're recording this on a wednesday because we want to get this out to you guys before the uh, pay-per-view like in a timely manner and i was trying to i even went through like all the smackdown clips and i'm trying to think of any possible matches too and even then i was still like drawing a blank like wwe is really right now it's just circling the drain Roman is, I think we talked about it a few weeks ago, Roman hasn't been on any of the shows recently. He's not going to be at Hell in a Cell because um, he he renegotiated his contract to do less dates. Um, he's the double champion right now. So that's why Raw, this week on Raw, it I think the, the headliner was uh, Bobby Lashley and the contract signing, if I remember correctly. It wasn't even, like, we don't, we, there's no champion segments on mm -hmm. it. So it's really not, it's not looking good right now. Um and to kind of segue, <laughs> WWE spent a whole week gassing up that Lacey Evans, the Marine, the American, hard American working woman, is going to re-debut in action on Memorial Day for Raw. And <laughs> the three hours came in. They came and went, and there was no <sighs> Lacey Evans. Um, so... so <laughs> The, the the Ben Drebergen of the WWE is as I'm supposed to um... <laughs> very bad. Did they send her to a NASCAR race? Is that what happened? She did. Um, she did. I don't even know if she raised the flag, but she was at a NASCAR race. They uh become. <laughs> I know so with WWE partnering with Fox, a lot of the superstars, the superstars, um, have gone like Sasha's waved that flag, the green flag, the checker, flag, whatever it is, she's waved that before, so that's not uncommon. Um, but I, everybody was just making fun of them. It just again more kind of goes to show that there doesn't seem to be much planning, it just seems to be like throwing stuff at the wall and then like, oh, if it gets dropped, oops, accidentally got dropped. Like, I don't, nobody knows why they dropped this Lacey e Evans segment. A lot of people online were like making fun of it. Like, y'all, you know, we wanted Lacey Evans. Like, I don't really think people wanted Lacey Evans, but I think they wanted to emphasize that they didn't get Lacey Evans. <laughs> so, it's just the dumpster fire back there, I, I think. Uh, Rob, are you familiar with Lacey Evans? I, I am not. So, um, yeah. I am intrigued. So they spent, let me, so let me just <laughs> quick background. They have spent the past, I think it's been like the past seven weeks in total, but five of those weeks they've been airing promos of her. It's her standing in like, like military style ring gears, like camo and stuff. And she's giving this promo straight to camera, but all of these promos with a waving um, American flag in the background, <laughs> Mm -hmm. all of these promos have just literally been her unloading her childhood trauma like direct to camera and me, yes. me and matt i've yeah. heard i've heard you talk about it yes yeah. <laughs> we've been talking about it. we're like this is so uncomfortable like i should not i'm not your therapist why are you talking directly to me about your father's alcohol issues about like your abuse it's it was cringe it was cringe Chappelle, you know what i'm talking about here Oh, I've been listening, so I'm aware. Uh, but what what do you think they're trying to do with Lacey Evans? Are they trying to make her like Bianca's next big feud? Because I saw some article on Twitter that said that she was like, at the beginning of Bianca's career, she was helping her out. Like, they're really trying mm -hmm. to prop her they're up close. as somebody we should be watching. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the goal? Is she, like, supposed to be next up? And they're Yeah, just but I feel to, like that she's like another, uh, another uh, face, right? So that's the thing, Rob. They did all of that. They did all of that traumatic spill to the camera. And she's currently listed on Raw as a heel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know 
right. it doesn't make sense. She hasn't like that's the thing. She hasn't redebuted yet. So like yesterday was supposed to be her debut. Like if we see her in the ring, especially against a jobber, we'll know what angle they're getting at. Do they want her to be booed? Do they want her to be um cheered? Like the last time she came out, Kayla. Uh, Kayla announced her. I was like, um, "Yes, uh, now here is. Can you? I think she said, can you respect, show respect, and get to your feet for Lacey Evans?'" And it was like, "What was that? Like, what? We didn't know if they were trying to stem the booze, if they're just trying to like prompt the audience not to boo, or if they were trying to poke the audience to boo with that statement." I was just so confused. Yeah, they were trying to tell you like, "This is an American hero. You need to stand up for." Mm -hmm. But at yes. the same time, it's like. But like, you know, like, it just seems like a little forced, a, a yes. bit, you know, like, hey, I know you don't want to root for this person, but you got to. It's like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. But that, she makes me wonder, like, what they're going to do with Bianca next then. Like, because if she could be next in line, I don't, like Rob said, if they're two faces, they're not probably going to allow that to be a good feud. You mm -hmm. know, you want to, somebody mm -hmm. to be a heel. So you wonder even if it's Bianca that's coming up next for her, if she's going to like try to build her, you know, um, her profile by taking on somebody else in the meantime. I really wonder what what's going to happen next. Yeah, my my definite guess is they don't, they'll need to like put her in there with just some so, some solid matches first. I can't really see her going for the title um, so soon. I think she'll definitely probably be in the women's Money in the Bank uh, match, but they really should not rush her back because you know she just came back from maternity leave. We don't know like what her stamina and all that is going to be like, like if, and if it's anything like Rhonda it's not good. So like we need a just training wheels. I, I, I will come to it, but I think they might have somebody else in mind for Bianca, depending on how this Oscar Becky Lynch situation um, unfolds. Uh, but yeah, Lacey Evans is just stuck in, in, you know, right with them tag titles <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> as of right now so we'll keep our eyes on it and we'll uh, of course report back um <laughs> so if you have if you want to send us any long form questions you can send them um you can email us uh send your email to wrestling at rob has a website.com you can also follow us on twitter at rest wrestling rehab up and you can join the co conversation by using hashtag wrestling rehab up and of course, you can follow me at Mari Talks Too Much. Follow Matt at Matt Scott GW. More plugs at the end. Um, please rate, review, subscribe. More importantly, subscribe. Go to robhasawebsite.com slash wrestling feed to subscribe wherever you get your uh, podcast. Um, so let's just take a quick break and we'll be back. All right. So. Let's get into the highlights of the week. Each week, we give you the highlights of the, of the week in wrestling. This week, of course, we'll be previewing Hell in a Cell. So um, the highlights in the little highlight playlist that will be conveniently located either in the YouTube drop-down box, in the YouTube description box, or in your um, show notes uh, will be very long. I sent, a, I sent a very long playlist to you guys because I wanted you to know every step of all of these storylines, which some are very well built. You know, some aren't, but... Um, you can find all of those highlights in our handy dandy playlist in the show notes. So let's get to the first and the foremost. Um, well, I think it's the match I might be looking forward to Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins in the titular Hell in a Cell. Um, <laughs> Rob, any thoughts on Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins? So I, my thoughts are just like, overall and uh, and again i don't know if like wrestling has been the same and i've changed uh but mm -hmm. you know the, for the first time like really being back into like wwe like week in week out for like in like 20 years or so uh, i find that a, a lot of the storylines going on right now i just feel like is very repetitive uh, i yes. mean this is the third consecutive pay-per-view that mm -hmm. we're seeing uh, Co you know, Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins and not to say like that their first two matches weren't good. Like I've enjoyed the matches they've had at the pay-per-view, but mm -hmm. you know, every, every week on raw, you know, it's, it's the same, the same thing over, over and over again. Like where, where is this going? Like I'm ready to move on past, uh, Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. 
Yeah, I agree. We got the really epic match at WrestleMania, which was a surprise because, of course, Cody debuted. Then we got WrestleMania Backlash, which felt like it was only like three weeks later. And it was still a good match, but, you know, we've seen the match, you know? So ever since then, they've tried to really up the ante of this storyline, like, between a lot of, like, Cody Rhodes saying, like, stuff like, Seth, you you're, you were the one, you were the one. My My father even acknowledged you, but, like, I'm here now type of thing. And Seth basically just snapping. It seems like they are trying to, I'm hoping that once this feud resolves, this means that Seth Rollins will kind of migrate from going to the jokey, funny Seth freaking Rollins to like, to like try and be like a pure bad guy. That's, that's what it feels like this is happening. Cause he's that we've definitely seen more fire from him for the past three weeks. And honestly, I'm not too mad. I think this is the only feud that deserves to be in the Hell in a Cell. It seems like as of right now, it is the only Cell match we have on the card. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, they needed this. They needed to build this up to put it in the Cell. Um, I'm excited to see if there's like some really good carnage to to be had in the Cell with the two of them because I think that could be like truly fun, especially like their brawls have been getting like way more intense. Um, but I am really interested to see the outcome of this match and see how they resolve this storyline. Um, Chappelle, how how do you feel about uh, Cody and Seth? I I'm hoping that at Hell in a Cell we get we get a lot of carnage, like you said, because I I, I am a fan of an uh, on site beef, you know, yeah. like where I'm <laughs> I'm gonna whoop your ass wherever I see you. And mm-hmm. that last clip where we see them like fighting, uh, you know, out in the crowd and stuff like that, that's so dope to me because I'm like, yes, I don't care if the match is not happening right now, beat his ass. I'm sick of this, <laughs> you know. Like at some point in the Miz, you can get your ass beat too, you know. So like I I appreciate that. So I'm hoping that. You know, they've done all this build up. Give us a good hell in the cell match. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm yes, questioning though. Exactly. Like I'm rooting for Cody Rhodes here. Am I in the minority on that one? Because no. like I think they've Mm-mm. done a good job of like really propping him up as somebody you should be rooting for. Um, whereas yeah. like Seth, I'm kind of like, eh, it's fine. Well, <laughs> Mari, that on the Hell in the Cell like posters and everything, that the entire poster is just Cody Rhodes, not it Seth is. Yeah. And Rollins, is not even on the po- the poster. Yeah, like the uh, big it, main one. Yeah, and it's just Cody Rhodes. And you know, uh, when you and you and Matt talked to uh, Stan C um, on the l- last podcast you did uh, after WrestleMania, and uh-huh. there was a lot of talk about like, um, you know, is Cody Rhodes, uh, you know, ultimately like, is this all going to are all roads leading to Cody winning the championship? And it really feels that way uh, that I, I just feel mm-hmm. like such a void in just the entire, you know, uh, federation of like, you know, what is the main storyline? Like, what is what is going on here? I feel like that Roman Reigns who's not even in this pay-per-view is like uh, like it's absentee double title holder who never fights anybody. Um, like, I, I really feel like that the push is going with, you know, Cody being the face of this thing, I think, uh, in the, you know, just uh, not too distant future. Yeah. 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 I mean, how can you not give somebody the title when he comes back, like first and foremost, being like, my father never won this title. I'm specifically going to go after this title for my father who has passed away. Like it is such a great storyline. And it's like, again, it's kind of funny because it, it makes you feel like in AEW, me and Matt talked about like our, our feelings of Cody Rhodes in AEW and how some of his promos just were like, eh, like a little iffy there, Cody, but it does feel like since he's been back, he's been hitting on all cylinders. And I wonder if it's because, you know, he's still writing his own promos. You can tell that, but maybe it's because he has somebody there um, assigned to help uh, like, reel him in when he needs reeling in so um i i think i think he's doing a great job i i can't 
see him not being the one to take at least one of those belts from Roman. Um, so I'm very excited to see his journey. It's so crazy that he's like just only been here for like a few months. Yeah. Um, but I so far this Seth Rollins um feud was a really good way to start it. So now we gotta see how they kind of like maneuver away but, from this. Seth yeah, Rollins I think feud. that this is this has got to be it with uh, yeah. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. But I don't know like where we, we go from here because I feel like that uh he's not even on the radar for Roman. Reigns. I, I feel like that we uh -huh. still have to have Roman, like we built up Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre yeah. and Roman Reigns isn't even in the, the pay-per-view and yeah, neither is gone. Drew McIntyre. Yep, they, they they gone. They both gone. So I, I think what we're either going to get is like a Cody Rhodes. I could definitely see Cody Rhodes winning uh, Money in the Bank. I could see that happening and then like holding it until WrestleMania. That'd be, that'd be good. I think that'd mm -hmm. be really good. Um, but uh, or Royal Rumble, there's always those cheap ways to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I, I think the sky's the limit, and I, I just want to see how they transition from this Seth feud because I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Because WWE is notorious for having good hot feuds, and then when they're over, nothing, you know what I'm saying? Back to obscurity, you go, you know. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really hoping this, this ends well and we get something compelling later so i think um for my pick let's get to our picks i am tempted to pick cody here but i think seth is gonna win <laughs> if, Jeez. We, if you follow wwe's logic seth always has these really good feuds he did it with edge too where he loses like the first two they really put him in his place and then the third one he kind of wins and you're like wait what what happened and and it kind of like it's kind of like 50 50 booking but they kind of like oh but the other guy kind of won too so you kind of think that oh the other guy actually won the feud when seth wins the last match so with this being a hell in a cell you know I'm pretty sure if you like leave the cell, you win type thing. Like I could see Seth winning, getting very brutal. It's, nobody interfere. We don't want people interfering in a hell in a cell. That's the whole point of putting it in a cell. Mm -hmm. But I, I can see Seth just like, is there DQs or no DQs? I can just see him getting mm -hmm. really, really just kind of like, like messing Cody up and then walking out and it, and it kind of catapults Seth to being like a really bad guy. And then it puts a lot of sympathy on Cody. I could see that happening because that's what WWE would do because they don't make any sense. So I'm going to go with Seth Rollins winning. <laughs> Chappelle, what's your pick? I want to root for Cody, but now, yeah. I mean, when you lay it out like that, it does make sense because I feel like what Rob is saying too is like you have Roman at the top of the game, right? And then you have this void of just like everybody who's kind of like, I won't say they're all like mid tier, but they just are like giving us mid tier content right now. It's like, Oh, U.S. title, intercontinental title, European title, like that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, but what happened to the pantheon of wrestlers that you used to have where you could put all six of them in a hell of a cell and it'd be the biggest thing that ever happened in the world, right? Uh, and so it's like, it's like, you need more people up there with Roman in these storylines. And exactly. I feel like Seth is like the closest one to just kind of be hanging out up there, but he'd have to get rid of Cody, you know, eventually. And it would have to be in a way that you would all still be rooting for Cody because he has to go find a different lane. Because if he can't get to Roman, what is he even doing here? So mm -hmm. I want to root for Cody. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Cody just because I really I think I could get behind the pick. I, I'm going to go with Cody for uh, this match. Yeah, I'm going to go with Cody also just because that uh, I feel like that at the top of the, the Federation. I, like, uh, I just don't know what what there is right now. And I think that you, they need they need Cody Rhodes to be like a, a big deal right now, because mm -hmm. I mean that. We just saw where Roman Reigns fought Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You know, they made Brock Le Le Lesnar won the Rumble. Where is he? Where well, he's gone too? Mm -hmm. He's, yep. he's not around. Damn years old, right? He's, and just come back. He, he, he's these... old. He's yeah, gone. Like, pick a new guy. You, know? <laughs> you, <laughs> you mentioned the Miz. He's not even. He doesn't have a, f a feud with anybody. Uh, he's not even in the pay per view. He's on. Not he's right on now, USA. Yeah. Uh, you know, babysitting. <laughs> yeah, his but I, so I think beautiful. Cody. I think Cody is going to win because because they uh, need to prop him up. Yeah, I mean, and they should it, keep propping. They can. They should. Mm -hmm. yeah, they should find more people to prop up to. Like this, they should not stop here. They like, please give us something. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, yep, yep. I agree. It's it's it, the top of the card feels real like tumbleweeds blowing around. It, it <laughs> kind of been like both divisions too. This um, whole pay per view, Mari, that uh, up until like last weekend, I was like, are there like three matches at Hell in the Cell? <laughs> what is like? What is go? Like, do they know I'm they saying. have a pay per view next week? That's what I'm saying. And so my only thought process too is like, once this is done, right? Like once this is done again, they have what four weeks or like they have exactly a month until yeah. money July in the bank. 2nd. Yeah. Like, oh, Jesus. So they're at least, at least we're probably going to get some speed um, when it comes to um, building for money in the bank. So they'll probably do a couple qualifying matches. They normally always do like a qualifying match or two. So maybe it'll speed up for, for that. Maybe, maybe we'll get, if Cody loses to Seth, maybe we'll get Cody entering the qualifying matches, losing, like losing his first qualifying match, trying to get a second one. Like they they might want to build up a little bit of him, like the underdog style baby face. I can see that happening. Um, that's why right. my, my take is, is Seth winning. <laughs> SummerSlam is like three weeks after money in the bank. <laughs> like, yeah, so in even if, Right. So no matter what happens, they can undo it in, a, in less than a month. They can just be like, you know what? Give them another one. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think Rob, didn't you speculate to me one time that you thought that maybe all three of those were so back to back because of, they might have a part timer coming back? Yeah, I, I I thought that you know I know there's some rumors about John Cena maybe John being Cena, in the mix, yes. and then and I saw mm -hmm. that there was like um a bunch of uh you know congratulations John Cena 20 year anniversary for the mm -hmm. WWE. So I just feel like uh, I think there's a lot of smoke around maybe uh John Cena potentially being back for a few weeks. Yeah, John Cena. It is officially John Cena Appreciation Month apparently uh at mm. least in wwe's book uh some of us some of other of us might be <laughs> celebrating a different month yes yeah, you know <laughs> some other people are saying you can't see me right now <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so but uh, the rumors are that uh john cena will be back on like maybe like building up to him coming back on june 27th which i don't know if that's his exact anniversary date or whatever mm -hmm. but as a, all the rumors, a little bit of rumors there. Um, but it all of this is gonna go by so quickly. Like these next few weeks are gonna go by quickly, and they, it can make or break uh what's going on in WWE right now because their their uh ratings on Monday hit a, an all-time low, even for like a Memorial Day taping. So um it's not looking good. Uh let's move on to the next match. Oh, actually, no. We do have a question from Edmo. Shout out to the great Edmo. He said, do you think any matches aside from Seth and Cody should be in a cell? And I, I think, like I said earlier, I think this is technically the only one I would put in the cell. I'm just briefly perusing the card. And I, I, I think that's that was the right call. That, that That's the cell match, honestly. Not the triple um, threat match? No, it just it just doesn't feel like uh, mm -mm, I wouldn't I wouldn't put the triple threat in, in the cell, especially since how reluctant it feels like they were to do this match to begin with. And we will get to that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I wouldn't. And honestly, it, putting too many cell matches like in there for no reason is just it's never fun because then. Like I, I remember the one year there was three. It was the three cell matches the year that. um. Sasha and Charlotte got to headline the pay-per-view in for Hell in a Cell because there was like two other cell matches they had to and they were going last they had to really like kind of to tone down their moves because you know if you have so many matches you can't keep repeating the same moves in those matches so like if if there's only one then you better hope that they can go full out and won't have to worry about stepping on the other matches toes got so it. I'm I'm good to good uh and Alex T. Still a good question, Edmo. Great question, Edmo. Uh, Alex T. also asked, we need to know Dominic's predictions for the Hell in the Cell card. My bad, Alex. I should have asked Rob sooner. We did get one official prediction from Dominic. Rob, what was Dominic's pred prediction? He said Cody Rhodes because we had been mm -hmm. uh, talking about it. But I mean, that he, he that just between us, like uh, he just like parrots a lot back that i say to him and then uh <laughs> so I, i'll give you i'll give you his predictions <laughs> okay yeah. whatever He's rob says from the pros yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. what you do you gotta listen mm -hmm. to the ogs and that's how you mm -hmm. kind of learn to form your own yeah this is good yeah. I but like he likes he like puts his, like a spin on it like uh yeah <laughs> and, sa and says the same thing multiple times 
Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to the Raw Women's Championship match. That is uh, Bianca Belair, the current champion, versus Asuka versus Becky Lynch. And again, um, this should have been the match on the card, but um, would you believe it? Uh, it wasn't what was originally scheduled to be on this card. Um, we found out through the whole Naomi and Sasha walkout that this was not the match that was originally planned for Hell in a Cell. It was originally planned for Bianca to go up against Naomi and, of course, for Ronda to go up against uh, Sasha, which, of course, makes no sense, especially since they had already been building to this Asuka versus Becky Lynch versus, you know, to get to Bianca type thing. Um I don't know why they didn't go with this originally because this is the most logical booking. Again, logical booking and like predictable booking, they can be one and the same, but they can also like, it'd be so logical that you're like, okay, this makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd much rather you give me logical booking than just nonsensical booking just for it to be a surprise. Like for it to be like a schmaz. Like I, I truly don't understand why why all of this started all of this friction happened you got two of your biggest stars are walking out because you didn't want to do this match and we're getting this match anyways like it's very 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 annoying um but the setup here was of course after the walkout um becky had begged uh uh adam pierce to give her a shot at bianca's title uh they said they said oscar versus becky for a number one contenders um match oscar won that match beating becky using the green miss which was really cool mm -hmm. um to face bianca but then the next week on raw they ran it back did oscar versus becky again and if becky won becky would be added to the match of course becky won she gets added to the match it is now a triple threat match and for the past uh, few weeks we've just been getting them all just sniping back and forth um bianca did take on oscar this week on raw Becky, of course, interfered. It just turned into just everybody hitting each other. Um, I am actually surprisingly not as interested <laughs> in this match as I feel like I should be, just because I know it. I I know it, it was an afterthought. Now you know, like I don't know. I'm just and if and it kind of feels like your Raw Women's Champion is the third wheel of of this feud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's even, like, what is Bianca even doing here? It seems like that this I, I'm more interested in Asuka versus Becky Lynch, and I, I feel like like uh, Bianca should be like the special guest referee. Like, uh, right. I feel like that she <laughs> wants no part of this rivalry with it, and, and it seems like that there is no rivalry really. Uh, Why well, there's a rivalry between Bianca and, and Becky Lynch, but the the Asuka Becky Lynch is much of a, a hotter feud. Yeah, she's just like on the sideline. I was watching the matches. And I'm thinking, so does Bianca just come supervise all the matches? She's just sitting there yeah. watching them. She yeah. she gets kicked one week and then she's back next week sitting on the sidelines. Get like, why are you so interested in this? Like, I understand <laughs> it's your title coming up, but I don't feel invested in Bianca's part in this feud. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, of, of course, Becky Lynch and her have some you know, unfinished business, but. I think you could have handled this without Bianca. I don't know if that would have necessarily needed to be a, a title match. Uh, I'm sorry, a pay-per-view match. But this is like, what, what, for the last month or so, they've just been like mm -hmm. like flip-flopping whoever's going to be in the match and one of them's going to be at ringside getting into the match. You know, like, yeah. I don't know. They could have did this on a Monday night. Like, it didn't have to be a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view for the championship. It, it could have already been done. So I'm, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I'm sitting here wondering, like, where were they going to go with Bianca and Asuka, you know, before this, like, where were they going to go if they were really trying to keep, it sounded like they were trying to keep Bianca and Asuka away from, I said Bianca, sorry, Becky and Asuka away from Bianca for a while. I think they were going to try and stretch it out. I I'm assuming um, that, or it just seems like they didn't want Becky or Asuka taking any of the pins. They much rather have Naomi and Sasha take, take the pins. Like, I don't know what, where they were going with this but the answer wasn't like once naomi and sasha walked out to then like speed it up mm -hmm. and make <laughs> becky and oscar wrestle two weeks in a row you know and then we also got bianca and oscar wrestling this week and it's just like one of those matches like why am i watching this on free tv it's it's such a weird feeling like 
I think that they're going to I think they're going to blow it out of the water, but the there's no storyline. The creative is all messed up. Like it just doesn't feel it just doesn't feel as big as it should. Now, I did like the promos th this week like with um <laughs> with Becky coming out and like basically saying she handed Oscar the um the bell and then kind of, you know, trying to She's logic ungrateful. her way yeah, into it, and then Oscar coming out and saying, she, you know, she wanted the belt, but it still just feels like, you know, again, Bianca coming out and be like, well, this is my belt, so I don't know why y'all fighting each other, you know, fight me. It's just, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, and I, I and I guess it's kind of weird because Oscar's a face, Bianca's a face, Becky is obviously a heel, but doesn't draw like really good heel heat so i think this is just one of those matches that we're gonna be like oh you know cool but the moment it starts like once the bell rings we're gonna be like in it because they're gonna deliver you know mm -hmm. yeah, and i really good wrestlers so that'll be fun exactly. to watch regardless yeah exactly and i think creative i think wwe creative relies way too much on their performers to out wrestle the bad creative to be quite honest so so what happens if like when Bianca goes in and wins wins the bat, wins this uh like whole thing, what happens with these other two women? Do they just keep fighting each other for another chance to get to Bianca? Like there's not a next up, you know, as far as I'm concerned, or at least it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't look like there was ever a next up because they were gonna have Naomi and Sasha like randomly fighting Throwing Rhonda in. and Bianca. Yeah. So what what are they even doing with Bianca uh, once she retains the title? So my guess is, like, if I truly, truly had to, like, guess, right, I would think that we would get Bianca wins, and then, of course, uh, Becky and Asuka turn their sights on Money in the Bank. They have to be like, the only way I can get a shot is Money in the Bank. They continue their kind of, like, semi-feud, like, you're in my way, I'm in your way. I think they're going to lose because they're going to be so focused on each other that Bianca's going to be able to um, she can go supervise. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly. So I think they'll, they'll focus on money in the bank and money in the bank will kind of decide the next step. But I also think if they really want to um, get a really good fire feud for Bianca for SummerSlam. Yeah. SummerSlam. I think it should be Rhea. I think Rhea and Judgment Day are doing a really good job mm -hmm. of Rhea be of Rhea being a heel. Rhea and Bianca have lots and lots of history to draw on. Rhea finally feels more elevated. Um, feels like she's out of Charlotte's shadow with Edge and Damian Priest backing her up. I think that would be great, like a great obstacle for Bianca to have to overcome as the face champion. So that's what I would want to look forward to. Um, a Rhea and Bianca feud going into SummerSlam. Um, and I and then I think Becky and Asuka just got to contend with Money in the Bank. I don't know. I have no idea what woman's going to win the women's Money in the Bank because if I had to guess, I'm going to guess that those them two plus Alexa, at the, at the very least, the three of them are going to be in that match and the three of them have all won. I do not want to see any repeats. And, and we don't know what's going on with Bailey. If Bailey comes back, if Bailey's going to be in that match, that's like, that's then four women who've won that Money in the Bank briefcase. So it's kind of like, do I want to see a repeat? The only reason why I would want to see a women's Money in the Bank repeat, especially with it only being like in its fourth or fifth year, is if they say, okay, only former Money in the Bank winners can be in this match. So if that's the case, you put the get the four of them plus Carmella in that match. That's all five of the the former winners, and I'd be like, okay, cool. Um, but it's just I, I I would not want that personally because I I kind of want Liv Liv Morgan to win that that if you know if Sasha's not back or Sasha and Naomi's not back. But I think that would be better than having four former winners and one person who has never won in there. Like I you know but that's that's a little bit further down the line um any anything else before we do our picks on um for the women's triple threat you think somebody's gonna get misted i Ooh. hope so i hope so i could see bianca getting misted and then in the fight to pin her <laughs> bianca like blindly pins <laughs> one of the two of <laughs> what if i was Asuka is going to go to Mist Bianca, but then she puts her sunglasses on at the last second. Yes. <laughs> That'd be cool. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm I'm concerned about Asuka's knee. They were making a big deal about it during oh, the match, right. like she's still mm-hmm. injured. So I'm wondering if that's going to play a part in her loss as well. Because I do, I mean, not to jump ahead to my pick, but you know, I'm going to pick my baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> well, you lead it off then, Chappelle. Your your pick. Yeah, the EST. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Bianca <laughs> is going to win this. I just. Why would you let her lose it right here? Right, what act mm-hmm. is gonna piss me off? You know, like don't do that. <laughs> you know, like if you're gonna make, if you're gonna take a title from her, make it a bigger stage that people actually care mm-hmm. about because I don't think this is the one. So same, you know. agreed. Rob, yeah, I don't think that Bianca is losing the title here in the triple threat match. So uh, yeah, give me Bianca. Yeah, I I think we all agree. I think this is way too early, and I think that's what WWE was kind of thinking to begin with that having this type of triple threat at this bull crap this is a c-list pay-per-view at this point nobody wants hell in a cell in the middle of june like at the beginning of the june like why did they move it from october so it feels weird like actually nobody likes the hell in a cell pay-per-view anyways because you're always forcing storylines into the cell mm-hmm. um but this is this is not it so bianca to retain and then i think we just gotta wait till the, the road to money in the bank to figure out what's what's going to happen with the women's division next i will say that i do think the raw women's division rob was right like all three of them are in this match however i do like how they're utilizing live and uh do drop and do drop and um nikki were on the the on raw this week they weren't utilized to the best advantage because they were go- going up against Alexa Bliss. It was Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop, which D- Alexa Bliss beating Dewdrop is a, a, it's weird, but they needed to get Alexa Bliss on the card because Alexa Bliss is the draw. She's back. So they want to use her as much as possible. Using her against a tag team is dumb, but that's what happens when your tag team champions are gone. Is <sighs> Anyways, um, so I do think that Raw is utilizing their women's division way better than SmackDown because honestly, at this point, I think I only know two women on the SmackDown roster, and that's Ronda Rousey and Raquel Gonzalez. At this point, I think mm-hmm. that's it. Um, so uh, it, it is it is better, I guess. Than- <laughs> it's a low bar very yeah. much that, very yeah. that it's better than the show that has two women on it yeah <laughs> and it's, it's better than that other show that gives their women absolutely no time mm-hmm. so um next up we have one of the strangest storylines okay mark. uh <laughs> kevin owens versus ezekiel <clears throat> or- Kim. Ken. <laughs> Ken Owens versus Ezekiel. <laughs> um, this storyline, it's very funny to me. It, it it truly is very funny, but it's also kind of like I don't I don't know what's going on. Like I, I truly look at see, look at this. Okay, here yeah. we go. Why is it this so is, big? This is so stupid. This is, that this has been going <laughs> on for how many months is this? <laughs> Where it's the same thing every single week. He's like, I know you're Elias. He's like, no, I'm Ezekiel. No, <laughs> it can't be. Like, Kevin, no, no, get no, over no. it. Get over <laughs> it. What's your problem? Uh, I miss the days where Kevin was just getting his ass beat by Roman Reigns. I just oh, miss God. him being like on the like when he was such a big deal. Like, I don't mm-hmm. care about this. This is so silly. Like, even back then, I was like, I don't see this for Kevin. I think he's gonna mm-hmm. die. But at least he was entertaining. I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. really. Yeah. Really, we've grown. You really doing this? <laughs> Kevin Owens is down bad for Ezekiel. <laughs> and, and the funny shows. the funny thing about this storyline to me is like I don't know if they're making fun of themselves. I feel like WWE is making fun of them themselves and they don't know they're making fun of themselves. Like, so you know, we all know the whole the storyline drama is Elias went away. He comes back, Beard is gone, calling himself Ezekiel. And Kevin is the straight man, or he's us audience members being like, what are you talking about? Your name is not Ezekiel, it's Elias. And the reason why it's kind of funny to me is because like me and Matt have sat up here and just ranted about 
We know that's Pete Dunn. Why are you calling him Butch? Why are you changing L.A. Knight's name from L.A. Knight to Max? What was it like? Max Dapper. Something stupid. It's like this doesn't make sense. They had their their own names in a product of yours and you move them up and now you have to give them another name. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense. How dumb do you think we are? And I think it's funny because Kevin is the audience. Kevin is like, I know that's you. <laughs> Why are we pretending that you have a different name? And that's what that's what kind of tickles me because it's like I I we're making fun of like we're laughing at you, WWE. We're not <laughs> laughing with you. <laughs> this is definitely us laughing at you. Um, and K KO is good at comedy. Like, I get it. Like, I he's very, very good at being like a he's bruising. Canadian. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At being a bruising badass who insults people in French. I love when he does that. But I love when he does his comedy shtick because he is so good at comedy. And I'm I'm always been one of those people. If you have the charisma, if you if you have if you can pull it off, do it. And I even loved on SmackDown last week. Um, he had Sami Zayn on his show, and Sami Zayn <laughs> was like, I agree, that's clearly a lie. It's why is everybody <laughs> <laughs> Calling him Ezekiel, and Kevin acted like Sammy was the only person in the world who understood him, and so I, I, I truly loved it. So it is a very silly, silly, dumb storyline. But sometimes wrestling needs to be silly and stupid. And Elias is back on a pay per view after like being a really high hit. Like Elias was at his peak in like around 2018 when we were going to the shows. Everybody was constantly doing the walk with Alliance chant, uh, Elias chant. And then all of a sudden he just kind of disappears and he's like back on top. So we got to give kudos to him as well because he's making a, this should be a dumb storyline, but they both have made it work to the point where they, they have a match on this pay-per-view. So um, I'm not mad at it. Truly. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. A question, yeah. Mario, the, the, the Ezekiel character. What what is the gimmick here? Other than he's not Elias. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what is, is there anything else to this <laughs> character? That's literally it. The only other thing is like he's kind of. It feels like he's kind of ripping off Warrior, right? Like he has the um mm -hmm. the armband with the tassels with the trunks. Just kind of it. It feels like a little bit like a, a, a Ultimate Warrior ripoff. But honestly, that's that's just the gimmick. I'm. I'm Elias's little brother Ezekiel, and and that's that's it right now. I feel like the real victim here is Chad Gable. Like, Truly. this poor man, this poor man. It's he's the smartest person in the world, apparently. Right? Is that is mm -hmm. that the the whole thing? And that's he just keeps getting like. his ass beat because of this feud. Like he's like, I gotta go investigate this because you told me to. But now now I'm like getting jumped and by you know and like I just feel like. Justice for Chad, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should look at him and think, what, what, what kind of L's are we taking here for mm -hmm. KO to go after this? Because it, he could just let it go. He really could just let it go. He could. And, and, it, and, his, <laughs> and, his, and his people could just stop getting their ass beat if you just let this go. Yeah. I'm still kind of confused how the Alpha Academy got roped into this, but they are adding <laughs> a lot of comedic yeah. elements to it. I love the the DNA tests being contaminated. Mm -hmm. Kudos to them to the lie detector. Some, Yes, yeah, some really mm -hmm. accurate um, descriptions of, of lab work mm -hmm. and chain of custody. Yeah. Uh, kudos on them. Uh, yeah. But it it truly, like, it, there's a, a lot of these storylines are kind of like bringing in other wrestlers. And it's, and it's weird because I think it, I think that's good because that means you're using a majority of your roster here. But then I also think it's like, why are you, why are you taking the L's? Like, like Chappelle said, why are you taking L's for him? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So. Who Yo, invited the Mysterios? How how did they end up in this mix? I'm sorry, Rob. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I I, I, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, you know, why does the Alpha Academy work for uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens? Owens? But yeah, the, that the Mysterios are other people that they, they don't. What are they doing <laughs> with them? I don't know. That that was the first time. That was the first time the Mysterios were back in a in a while. I don't know how. Um... Well, no, they were like they kept getting beat up by Veer Mahan, and it was like, oh, okay, oh, we're right. gonna have a handicap yeah. match with the Mysterios and Veer Mahan. They brought out Jerry the King Lawler a couple of weeks ago on Raw, 
to interview Veer Mahan, but no, that they just threw uh, Elias in a tag team. Usually I that's Drew McIntyre's wrong. spot lately. To yeah. Be, <laughs> sort of like the extra person in a six man tag. Yeah. The, which he was on, on SmackDown last week with mm-hmm. the new day, the mm-hmm. Drew day, if you will. Yeah. I, I don't know how any of these people are involved in this storyline, but it, it has been very funny to me. And um, I'm going to go on ahead and. Ooh, I, I'm gonna pick KO here. Like you just let KO go. I hope KO wins this because I feel like he needs to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Rob, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I was thinking Elias uh, w- was gonna win, but maybe Kevin Owens needs to win and he then just move to. on. Maybe like yes. he could just like take the 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 victory that he beat Elias and then you know fight somebody else. Yeah. 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 I feel like if he loses, he can't let it go. You know, like he's got to mm-hmm. kind of like got to move on. I, yeah, because you you went all through you went through all of this for the Alpha Academy to get their ass beat, and now for you to lose too. It's like you you gotta win this one and then move on. But I, what does that mean for Ezekiel at that point, right? Because like mm-hmm. this is his main storyline, and he seems to be a big a big name. Well, or at least he was. I wonder what's next for him. That was his yeah. brother. He can't just like trade right. on his brother's right. greatness. Chappelle. <laughs> You're right. But what was what was I thinking? <laughs> bad bad Chappelle. Um. Let's just take a quick break and we'll finish up with a card. Okay. All right. So next up we have, see, look, I'm telling you, I'm a little bit slower here with the the production stuff. Doing great. Um, Bobby Lashley and Omis versus, oh, Bobby Lashley versus Omis and MVP. Um, Hmm. Hmm. I, I'm sorry. What well, I have questions. What, please? Why is this a thing? Because like, I don't get me wrong. I understand why a match between these people would happen, but the mm-hmm. the fact that these people are signed up for a handicap match, mm-hmm. um, I, I I might have to assume some shenanigans are going to occur because Bobby Lash is a big guy. But have you seen Omis? Have you seen like <laughs> like, like why does this he need is- an extra? So boring. Yeah. We've uh, uh, Bobby Lashley and almost have, have fought like 15 times since WrestleMania. Yeah. 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 And, enough. And, enough. Yeah. <laughs> and theirs is even worse than the Cody Seth Rollins because Cody and Seth Rollins have basically just kind of been fighting for, on the pay-per-views. Lashley and Omis have been fighting every <laughs> on Raw plus the pay-per-views. They had a they arm wrestled match. one time because yeah. they- I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> they had a steel cage match like a few weeks ago on free TV. So it's just kind of like, why are we doing this? Nobody cares mm-hmm. about a handicap match, man. Like, yeah. nobody cares. So I don't, especially when the handicap is on the guy who you, you have a giant and then you have another guy <laughs> versus one of the, yeah. it just doesn't. All right. I don't even know why they're fighting. Um, because MVP left last. No, but they were home. fighting before that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's true. Um, Bobby Lashley beat him at WrestleMania with MVP, and then MVP oh, yeah. switched sides, and then they're fighting now. Uh, but uh, I like I don't even know what this is about. Um, yeah, I. Uh, like, you think you're tr- big? Well, I'm bigger than you. Yeah, right, they tried to it. make it feel big. They tried to see if they, they could make it feel big by having it like headline, but it, like you, we've seen it. We've seen these big two men, meaty mm-hmm. men, slapping meats way too many slapping times meats. for us to care. Yeah, yeah, at this point, and making it a handicap match does nothing for me. I don't I, I, unless MVP flips again, and even then, I just be like, <laughs> what was the past month about like mm-hmm. i don't know we, i think we did see something about like cedric alexander might have been like um trying to get back with mvp again so maybe a hurt business that's uh surrounded with, but headed by omis i don't know i don't know what's mm-hmm. happening here um i i don't care Chappelle. <laughs> no normally this would be my bag like, right, I like right. Bobby Lashley. I'm terrified of him. Same, and then, yeah. like, you know how I feel about Omis. So I'm like, this, right. this is like, I, I, would like <laughs> I would like this match. But mm-hmm. it's like, man, I, what are y'all doing? And then you throw MVP in here as a handicap. It's like, so y'all just going to stop Bobby Lashley out for 40 minutes? <laughs> like, Bobby Lashley's right. strong, but, you know, like, y'all are pretty, pretty evenly matched wrestlers at this point. Uh-huh. You don't need 
MVP. I mean, MVP actually fought Bobby, Bobby Lashley himself, you know, so I don't, why yeah. do you sign off for a handicap match? Like, what are you trying to prove, Bobby? So I, mm-hmm. I don't know. And then with the whole Cedric yeah. Alexander thing. In he's fairness to Bobby match. Lashley, I, he, that he lost the match that got, that where MVP got to pick what the stipulation was, right? right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it wasn't Bobby Lashley's idea. idea. <laughs> yeah, this is right. so he had silly. to fight this handicap match. Yeah, this is so silly. I just like, what? Well, why are we doing this? But, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's just, I, I want to care more about this match, and I just me don't. too. I, I, I really wish I cared more because I like them a lot. I wish they would have picked like a like a street match stipulation or something like yeah. that. I think that would have been way better. Um, yeah, some sort of hardcore style stipulation instead of like a cell because thank God they just didn't put them in the cells and they had already did the steel cage. But the handicap match adds absolutely nothing. A strap match would have been kind of cool, like a strap match. But I think they're they're saving that for Cody. Um, but this this just does not the stipulation for me. Um, I'm gonna go on ahead and just pick Bobby Lashley at this point. He has to like win handily mm-hmm. i guess if we want this to be over i would assume yeah yep. yeah give me the almighty bobby lashley thing and uh, but again <laughs> enough enough Please, <laughs> don't make them fight anymore i feel like that's a, a theme with all with all of these things mm-hmm. that uh, and again, I, I don't want to sound like, oh, do you even like wrestling? And it's like, right. I, 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 I want to. I feel like I just came back, but I, I just feel like the, it's so repetitive. Yeah, mm. it's like you you want to enjoy everything, but they're just not making it easy. And again, these performers can pull it out, but I I really want to be jazzed up going into the into the matches so that I don't have to be worked up. Yeah, in, but- into. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you, you, like you never have to worry about. It. Oh, if I, you missed the show because it's the same show you saw last week. <laughs> very true. Oh my god, very, very true. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna pick mm-hmm. the Nigerian giant. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just to be different. Honestly, I just don't find it yeah. fun to watch one person get beat up on by two people, especially when they're a true. really good wrestler. Like I could see if it was like. Uh, there was like some shenanigans going on, you know, mm-hmm. maybe I, I would be okay with that. Or if, you know, if Bobby Lashley was like some huge heel or something, you know, whatever, but this is kind of like, eh, it's fine. So either one who wins, I really don't care, but I do want them to move on to a different storyline. I want to see them mix it up a little bit. Same. I wonder if somebody will come out and help Lashley. That could be cool. Like it may, do they need more tag teams? I don't know. The men, tag team wrestling is in the dirt for both the men and the women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Maybe Cedric will come out and help Lashley. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see. All right. Next up, we have uh, Liv Morgan, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles versus Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest, and Edge in a um, mixed a mixed six-man tag match. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's how you say it. Um, this I am actually very excited about. I'm I like true- this one. Yes, I love me some Judgment Day. Like Edge is like killing it with his um heel run. I'm so happy for him because I know this is like just all he wanted. He wanted to come back and he wanted to not only like put his body on the line and all that good stuff, but like make a dent. And I love it. I love the promo they they gave a couple of weeks ago. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley being like his two heavies, him just being chilling in his little throne thingy, just like even their promos being kind of stiff, like uh, Damian Priest, uh, do bow down to us, blah, blah, blah. And Rhea, the same kind of tone and it, I am no longer this, this and that. Their like monotoned um, deliveries versus edges, just like kind of like relaxed, charismatic, devilish uh, while insulting you type of style has yeah. been just really good <laughs> to me. Uh, Sometimes the insults hit a little too close to home. I didn't like <laughs> really? it. Edge, Edge was making me like uh, think about my life. Yes, didn't like he was, that. Yes, he's calling everybody like just boring. He's like, could be you, 
And it's like he was just he was just so creepy. <laughs> it's like very like, and that's what I like about it because it doesn't feel like he was really putting on anything. It doesn't feel like a gimmick. It feel it feels like if if the devil was real, this yeah. would be him talking to you like sweetly yet insulting, trying to get you to do what he wants you to do. So mm-hmm. I, I I like that. Uh, Chappelle, what do you think? Um, I, I like seeing Edge in this in this role as well. It it takes me way back to my heyday of wrestling. What was it? The Brood, you know, the brood, you the, mm-hmm. the, yeah, the Edge and Christian and was it Gangrel? Um, mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. so like I remember those days. So like I kind of like you know Dark Edge. Um, mm-hmm. but personally, I like fact I like these like stables and factions to be bigger. Mm-hmm. You know? So when they yeah. were doing the yeah. recruiting, I was like really on pins and needles hoping that somebody would step up and be like the fourth and fifth member. Like where, where's your tag team? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think mm-hmm. your stable needs to have mm-hmm. a tag team. Um, and so I'm like, man, who is it going to be? And so every time they drop a name and they're asking, you know, AJ Styles, of course, to come out there. And I'm like, I was just like, yeah, but pick somebody, you know, like, I don't care. Who <laughs> I just want this to be a bigger thing, you know? Cause like I said, I come back, I'm from the time of like D generation X, you know, having 25 people. It, it felt like <laughs> you. Um, yeah. NWO. But, but, yeah. So that's yeah. what I was looking for. The heart for. foundation. Like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give me my people. I like a, a good club of people where you can dispatch them into different matches and it makes sense, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I was like, I didn't, I, I was hoping that's where we would go. This is fine though. I'm very happy with this. Um, you know, um, Rhea Ripley's amazing. She's so strong. And I, I could see her trying to go collect the championship, like you said earlier, from mm-hmm. Bianca, um, just because, like, who else is going to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, but that does make me worry about Liv Morgan a little bit. You know, like, um, <laughs> just, I'm looking at this lineup, and I, yeah, I, I feel if anybody's going to get their ass whooped this time, I think she should be worried. Um, just because, I mean, this is a, it's a stacked group here, and uh, Rhea Ripley, she's stacked. nothing to play with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me let me drop something on you guys. I think that uh, m- m- my prediction, just kind of up front, is that Judgment Day is going to win, and I think they're going to win via some help. I think they are going to get some help from somebody. Now, a few weeks back, I think it was Edge um, Instagrammed a picture of Liv Morgan, like kind of you know before all of the shenanigans. And, Mm. you know, we know AJ Styles and Finn are in this feud, mostly because, you know, they're each getting beat up by the Judgment Day. But, you know, they have deep roots from, like, Japan, where they're both in the the Bullet Club. I don't think they were in the Bullet Club at the same time, though. But, you know, that loose association, that's why they're doing the click hand signal every chance they get. And that's why, like, Liv Morgan joined them, and now they're all clicking it out, and it's Bullet Club, and it's yay, yay, this, yay, yay, that. In a world i could it would be kind of cool if live costs them their match and then she turns over to the dark side with judgment Ooh. day her and raya become the tag become a tag team and if you know if we still had tag team champions mm-hmm. it would have been amazing to see them from that angle with the new like darkness backing them as opposed to right after WrestleMania when they were trying to go uh, take the belts from Naomi and Sasha and they were still like, oh, goody two shoes. Like, and then they could have went up against them like that. (sighs) That won't happen. But, you know, maybe they end up with the tag titles and, you know, they defend those. Either way, I mean, that's just a pipe dream. I would think I'd much rather Rhea um, like chase Bianca more than anything but that could be something like very, very shenanigan shenanigans um, that we could get from this match Chappelle looks very excited is that well, something you want Chappelle yeah well you know I was rooting for uh, Alexa Bliss to come and join the dark side again you know because I think oh, she right. like her dark her demon aesthetic you know it mm-hmm. kind of fits in uh, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be the move but every time no. they drop her name I'm like well do it you know I miss mm-hmm. the, uh, evil Alexa so you know it the Alexa stuff is again so annoying because you did all of those vignettes about her in therapy. I thought she was gonna get rid of the Lily doll. The Lily doll is still there when she brings her still out. Still creepy. Don't like still it. Still creepy. But they they 
they changed Alexa's music completely. It's not She's, creepy enough. Also, it's, could they change her not first at all. name also? Because I'm tired. Every time I talk about her, the thing in my house is like starts playing. <laughs> like uh, now playing creepy doll song. Like no, <laughs> no, don't do it. Stop. Cancel. <laughs> Yes, Alexa Bliss is. I mean, she's back to you to using like the the twisted bliss and everything too. So she's like full on face right now. So it just would not make sense to turn her back right. heel. And yeah. it's Annoyed. so weird, so weird yeah. uh, what they're going with. But I agree with you, Chappelle. Like I liked her creepier elements. Um, so right now she's just smiling and coming out with pink and black on. It's just cool. So. We'll see. But I, I definitely think that Judgment Day is getting another member on Sunday. So, Ooh. um, yeah, so that's who I'm going to go with with my pick. Chappelle, what's your pick? I'm picking them as well, but just because it just feels like they should be winning. Like I, I like yeah. for them to be he heels, they're very rootable, um, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like I have no issue rooting for them at all. I'm like, oh, no, that's fine. If you have to murder these people, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's who I'm picking as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you talked me into it. Yeah, I think Judgment Day is gonna win. Like, I, I really, I don't care about Finn Balor, and I don't at care all. about uh, Damian Priest. Uh, yeah. Like, I kind of feel like that they <laughs> well, could lose lose those two guys. And probably this is probably be a tasteless joke. Maybe Matt Riddle will join the the Judgment Day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me. <laughs> Chappelle, do you know what I'm talking about? No. Well, if, I hope you're not talking about the Riddle that I'm thinking you're talking about. Uh, he so, looks like he bought unemployed. <laughs> I did not. I did not include this in the news section, but Matt Riddle, the aka one half of RK Bro, just broke up mm -hmm. with his last girlfriend, and she was on Twitter airing him out. Um, oh, really? What'd she say? <laughs> I'm, uh -oh. trying, I'm trying to phrase it so it's age appropriate on this yes. podcast. Okay. Oh, she so was basically is fine. <laughs> she, she was basically saying that Riddle and Damian Priest on their off days every wednesday like to go to strip clubs bring back some women and then um eiffel tower them <laughs> like they like okay they were it was awful. oh they got the screenshots of the text messages out there too <laughs> Bet. Yeah. you know i don't miss no twitter drama i already found all of this <laughs> his ex-wife versus his girlfriend let's talk about it are, are, there, are there two f's in eiffel tower <laughs> <laughs> usually right okay <laughs> don't go on urban dictionary rob um no no, no. <laughs> I, I just smoked your ass oh my god <laughs> um Woo. Yes. So I that mean, was the <laughs> Yeah. That's the riddle I was thinking of. I didn't know about yes. this, but I but I do think that like just judging by the trajectory of RK Bro, he might need somebody to hang out with. A lot of tag teaming going on. <laughs> <laughs> tag team champions of the world. Mm -hmm. Listen, back in the day. <laughs> riddle and... anyways um exactly moving on to uh get we're going back to <laughs> getting highbrow we're going high we're gonna go back to our highbrow show uh again um <laughs> next up <laughs> ew next up we have the united states championship match austin theory versus mustafa ali this storyline, man, I'm telling you. So I love me some Mustafa Ali. I mm -hmm. love him. Like when the free Ali, like the moment they were saying he was unhappy with his contract and they were holding him and I was so sad. I'm like, and then he just shows up on TV one day and I'm like, yo, what is happening? But from the moment he's been back out, they've been doing this, you know, underdog versus the authorities. Uh, style narrative like this is basically a, a definitely a Daniel Bryan style storyline here because they always do this if if they want somebody who can talk uh, talk to wrestlers basically give them a scolding it's always Miz you know it's he, mm. it started where he went on Miz TV Miz Mizzed everywhere and um we get the setup for Ali to just basically have everything thrown at the wall, like at him, you know, um, 
between having to fight the Miz and then Austin Theory, who has god awful music. Like, I hate Austin Theory so much. <laughs> oh man, I do not like him at all. And, um, I, like, it seems like that he's just going by theory now. Yes, yeah, yes, theory. yes, because the WWE drops names randomly and like Riddle is a stupid name, Theory is a stupid name. They're both stupid people, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, <laughs> but I hate his music because his music starts out by saying "A Town Down." If you don't get that out of here, I am just. Anyways, so Mustafa has had to over the past few weeks. He's had to beat Miz. He's had to beat Tommaso Ciampa. But when I say beat, when I said he's had to beat, he hasn't beat any of these people. Mustafa has lost all of these matches because of some form of either theory getting in the way and causing him to lose a match or Miz getting in the way, causing him to lose a match. Then at one point he had to uh, try and beat Veer Mahan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely did not beat your mom. No, nope. no. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Um. He had. He went up against Theory with Miz as the special guest referee. It's like yep. they are literally throwing the kitchen sink at Mustafa Ali. He is losing, but he is like you know he's bringing up his old gimmick like the light you know being the light and and um his promo saying that he the audience is what you know what he keeps coming back for, which is so true, and I love that. For him and we finally got like on this week he had to beat champa to get a title match austin theory <laughs> interrupted the match so he got he won by disqualification so austin theory is like okay well then because you won and you get a title match let's do it right now and so of course that was after he already beat uh, mustafa up a, a lot mm-hmm. um so, <laughs> so he he beats him again and i'm like it it sucks because I it's it's very effective because Mustafa's literally lost everything every every single match so it, technically he should not be getting any chance at the belt here but after Theory did all of that Theory is supposed to be Vince McMahon's protege and all of that Vince McMahon still was like all right let's give him a fair shot <laughs> yeah, in I mean that sounds like classic Vince it does yeah mm-hmm. yeah. It, classic as in he doesn't know what he wants so Mm -hmm. we're getting theory versus mustafa ali and i'm excited about it because i just love watching mustafa ali russell i love he's doing hilarious work on his twitter as always he always puts out good promos he puts out good heartwarming promos um but i'm just i i'm i'm happy about this match i really hope he wins i don't know if he will but I, I really hope he wins. Uh, Chappelle, do you, how do you feel about the storyline? I like the storyline a lot. And I found myself getting tired of watching Mustafa get like, beat up. Yeah. But, very but bad. when I really thought I was about to start rooting for him, the the uh, like uh, most recent DQ happened, right? And I was like, man, I do love a good heel. You know, um, this idea, because I was like, who, this asshole, like, how dare you? Like, you're walking around here like Vince McMahon chose you and you can do all this stuff. You got the Miz calling all these matches. I was like, I was I was really getting upset with him. I was like, that's a good heel. But then when he was like, no, he's kind of smarmy as well. I was like, I, I can root for this. I can root for this heel. And so mm-hmm. I, I think, yeah, once Vince was like, nah, you're going to fight him for real, for fair, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, for the first time, you actually go have a real decent match with this man one on one. I was like, I'd be okay with Theory winning this one. I, I still like Mustafa, mm-hmm. but like I said, just for the sake of the storyline, I guess for a second, I was like, oh no, this guy sucks. But now I'm like, I think it'd be entertaining to see if he could keep this up. So mm-hmm. that's where I'm leaning. So <laughs> I know Mari likes uh, Mustafa, uh, and so that's uh, mm-hmm. what what has made me you know interested in him. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm with Chappelle. I I enjoy theory. I, like I enjoy mm-hmm. having a heel around. I I I really like having the Miz around. I like having theory around. Um, I do think that you know all of these storylines have led to uh, Mustafa Ali is going to become the the champion here. I think he's gonna win. I think he's gonna win, and I think that <laughs> then uh, theory will have uh, some have to figure out something else to do. 
I don't know, man. Y'all underestimate Vince McMahon's petty. Uh, because I'm kind of rooting for it, you know. <laughs> Hell in a Cell is in Chicago, which is yeah. Mustafa's hometown. Yep, yeah. he was a Chicago cop for years. Chicago loves him, and Vince loves making wrestlers lose in their hometown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mustafa has been after the United States Championship for years now at this point. And I think it would be great storyline for him to win it, but I see, I don't think they'll do it. I think this will, especially with the recent contract disputes, I could definitely see Vince being petty and not doing it. I oh. could definitely see, I, my guess is we'll get a dusty finish. I think we'll get a finish where Mustafa pins him, but oh, where, where's the ref? Oh God, did the ref take a bump? Mm. I can definitely see during this match, I'm like, oh, there goes the ref. Oh God. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I can definitely see that happening. Maybe Miz comes out in his shirt and then, mm-hmm. but um I you got I, nothing else to do at the pay-per-view. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could you imagine just like all those people like being them all coming out and like <laughs> Bir Mahan boots <laughs> Mustafa in the face, <laughs> Miz gives them like all I could see them doing something stupid like that. But if, like, you're going to go that over the top, I need, I, like, the storyline would say Mustafa Ali should win this. But mm-hmm. it's WWE. So, unfortunately, I think I'm going to go with Theory winning. Because oh. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to think what WWE is thinking. So, that'll be my prediction. Theory wins. Chappelle, would, would you like it more if Theory, instead of taking a selfie, he like tweeted when uh, he beats his opponent? <laughs> Take the selfie and then, and then tweet and then it does, out. Does he tweet it in out in real after? time? Yeah. He puts it on his yeah. Instagram, I think. I think he puts uh, it on yeah. his Instagram. I won't mm-hmm. do it in real time. Like, or go That's why he's Mr. Instagram McMahon's protege. Yeah, like, but like, could you imagine, like, right before you pin someone going live on Instagram and like that's a, like, that would be the coolest stunt mm-hmm. ever. I, like mm-hmm. I said, I, I like it. It's, it's, somebody who I could feel myself rooting against for a very long time if he keeps yeah. this up. And I so think that's, that's going to be my new gimmick. Uh, I'm going to be Chappelle's protege. Stop it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stop it. Mr. Chappelle's protege. <laughs> Not Mr. Chappelle. Okay, Let, Mr. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chappelle. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, what's your pick, Chappelle? Official I'm picking pick. theory. Yeah, I'm picking theory. Like I said, I, 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 I want to hate him even more, and so I need him to win mm-hmm. so I can get a good hate into him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Rob? I'm going to hold out hope. Uh, uh, Mustafa Ali will be the U.S. title holder. I truly hope he wins because if he is, if he does win and gets that United States title, oh, that could be so good. He talks about how he's always wanted to represent the United States title, how he's always wanted to defend it. I could see the open challenge coming back. I think Mustafa should win it. Now it's should versus what that old man will do is different. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. All right. And I think we, mm-hmm. For, Rob? can I add one other thing about, and then, uh, where the hell is Ricochet? That uh, does he ever defend the Intercontinental Championship? I shamelessly dropped Intercontinental Championship at the beginning of this podcast, and I was like, because it just went off. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's gone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I don't know. Like SmackDown, I have no idea what's happening on SmackDown. I feel like it's nothing. <laughs> I have not watched a full episode of SmackDown since Ronda Rousey won that belt. To be mm-hmm. qu- qu- quite honest, um, so I I don't know what's going on over there. Um, so our final official match that's been well, wait oh no technically this isn't even official. Yeah, it's not even official. The final match that might be added to the pay per view mm-hmm. is the undisputed tag team championship match: the Usos, who are the champions, versus Riddle and Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, which felt like it came out of like left field because Randy I think Orton, it did. yeah, Randy Orton <laughs> is injured, and I can't. I I'm truly not sure. I I don't know if I wasn't paying attention, but I don't know if Randy Orton was like really. I think he's really injured. I, 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 I was, yeah, I, I was uh, watching a YouTube video where that uh, his career might be over. That that might be that oh, might be it for Randy really? Orton. And, and I, I really like uh, come to become a Randy Orton fan. I, I really mm-hmm. like him, and uh, I've had a lot of fun. Like in my 20 year absence of uh, the WWE, which has coincided with uh, 
with the Viper's career. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I've been watching him in a lot of rumbles and stuff like that. So I, I really like him. And, uh, you know, I'd be uh, very bummed out if he can't come back. Yeah, I truly <laughs> I truly thought because uh, he got he got like beat up on like a like uh, the Usos jumping them type storyline. So I, I, I just thought it was like every other. Yeah, oh, like Roman Reigns just like uh, is not showing yeah. up for a while. Yeah, but I know I you're right. I think he is he is really injured, and they're consulting like neurosurgeons and orthopedic oh, spine surgeons. Ooh, you hate that because I mean that is I mean Randy Orton. You love him or hate him, that's a legend. You know, mm -hmm. like legend yeah, like he, yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, that too. But um, I I felt like even in this promo, you know, the like the the RK Bro stuff where they're talking about Randy Orton and sending him all the like thoughts and prayers from the from the ring, I yeah. it felt different. It didn't feel like oh mm -hmm. this person's like hurt for play play. Like did like the mm -hmm. crowd felt like they were in on it too. You know, oh, it felt yeah. very somber, and mm -hmm. so I was like. Like it felt like Riddle was about to cry. Like, like, yeah. all right, I'm done here. That's why I was like, I mean, yeah. They, and the then judgment, doing, judgment day's hiring. Yeah, you know? he was doing the Randy Orton <laughs> moves in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It really feels like he's paying homage to someone who's not going to wrestle again. And it's, I, it felt, it really was uncomfortable for me to watch, honestly. And not to make that yeah. about me, but that's just like <laughs> how much energy that I was getting off of them. I was like, this doesn't feel like it's fake. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that sucks. That really does suck for Randy because, you know, we just celebrated 20, 20 years and for this to happen and because, you, you know, he's one of those guys who would have wanted to go out on his terms. So hopefully he gets better. Hopefully I don't truly know the extent of his injury. So hopefully he comes back in a timely manner. Um, but yeah, so Nakamura is now teaming with um, with Riddle, which makes sense because um uh, Rick Boogs is out with that quad injury. Quad, I think it was his quad, Achilles, one of those. And um, he and he sustained that during the Usos match, the match with them versus the Usos. So this makes sense. Um, more than likely, they'll get that match. More than likely, they'll lose. I think the Usos just got those belts. I don't know what the, the these unified. I hate unified titles. I I hate them. I am on record in saying. One person should not be holding two titles. I don't care if you're a tag team or I don't like it. So, um, I, yeah, that, that, that's sad, but that's possibly what's going to be on the card. I know they, um, they won the match on raw via disqualification. I think it was, um, and I, well, let me see. I don't think I have any official match graphics for them. Um, but I think we can just, you know, I'll quickly say, I don't, are we all have the Usos winning possibly? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah like no it. official yeah. match graphics for them. Yeah. So they might be in the pile of, um, so if I had to guess, um, though, I would be shocked if they don't find Rhonda somewhat, somebody to fight at Hell in a Cell. I don't know if that means they'll just do, uh, Raquel Gonzalez. Again, that would be their third time against each other. But then they mm -hmm. also kind of teased them working together last week. Boring. I don't care. I don't. I, newsflash. I don't care. I'm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like random matches. I'm not watching random matches. Um, last time I had checked, Sh Shotzi was trying to like rally the locker room, like we need to get our due, and she was talking to like Natalia and Shayna and um, Aaliyah. Th that's their locker room right now. It's. What is Shayna doing? Man, Shayna and Natalia went up against um, Ronda and Raquel on on SmackDown. And I think Shayna took the pin, which is very, Ooh. very unfortunate. I know. Right. Shayna, if anybody should be fighting Ronda right now, it should be Shayna in a single match. All I'm saying. Match. <laughs> that's, that's it makes I'm no saying. sense. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so... <laughs> And that might be the only way you can make me watch a Ronda match because Shayna could carry her to a good match. She's so um, good, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, uh, uh, Ronda, the Ronda and Raquel's first match wasn't too bad. I, I'll give them that. I, I I said it wasn't like a complete dumpster fire um, like her Charlotte matches have been. Um, mm -hmm. But 
I don't, I just truly don't care. I'm thinking maybe they might, if they do add a second Hell in a Cell, it might be Madcap Moss and Baron Corbin. But again, who cares? Oh, yeah, who cares? Baron who Corbin Mad and Madcap Moss. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a comedian. Him and Baron Corbin have been fighting since before WrestleMania. He broke or... the Andre the Giant statue. Yeah, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, it was it was Corbin's best friend, the guy who was like, ha, ha, I was joking, and then they mm -hmm. finally broke up, and it's just been like, I, nobody cares, nobody mm -hmm. cares. So I don't know. So TBD guys, like we said, we are doing this on a Wednesday. So if more stuff gets added, then um, let us know. Tweet at us. Tweet us your predictions. Uh, follow us, and we will um, give out our predictions. So. Um, that's it. Uh Chappelle, tell me, so which which uh, match are you most looking forward to at Hell in a Cell? Um, it's like I think they're gonna be some really good ones, but you know, the, the Cody Rhodes fight, I think I think I have to go with that. It's in the cell, so it's automatically a little bit more interesting than some of the other ones to me. Um, uh, but like I'm hoping that this is the end of that storyline, you know, that something happens and we can start to move away from it. So I would like to see. Cody Rhodes, you know, really show up and kind of, you know, like step into this role. I really think that they're trying to build him up and I want to see it. So that's what I'm rooting for. I'm assuming that's the main event. So I'll be there all night. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Rob, how about you? Yeah, I'll agree with Chappelle. I think that uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins is the most uh, intriguing matchup in a overwhelmingly uh underwhelming <laughs> pay-per-view uh just like not that much uh excitement here um I i'd say second is maybe the the triple threat match uh with oscar bianca and becky mm -hmm. i mean yep. even even the mustafa fight is kind of entertaining a little bit because you know he's gonna he's gonna he's a good fight he's a good wrestler you know so it's kind of mm -hmm. like it'll be fun to watch but I agree. I think it's probably third after that um, that triple the women. match. Yep, mm -hmm. I, I, exactly that. Um, that would be my ranking. It'd be Cody, the women, and then uh, Mustafa and Theory. I think Mustafa and Theory have like like show stealer potential because as much as I don't like Theory, um, he can wrestle and Mustafa Ali can wrestle down and both of them kind of have a um like a cruiserweight background a little bit um so there has there has to be a lot of high flying going gonna happen in that match I'm thinking so that could definitely be a really really good match of the night uh candidate and of course the women as well the once the women get into the ring it's like all bets are off especially like those three women mm -hmm. Jeez Louise, that's going to be, I think that's going to be good as well. So um, very underwhelming card, but there are like some matches that yeah. I, I'm like it here for. Feels like a good Monday Night Raw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we'll finally hopefully be getting that pay-per-view quality like wrestling. Because, you know, sometimes when you're when you're um, facing your opponent for the third time on Raw, knowing you're going to face each other again at a pay-per-view, you don't want to pull out all the stops you know mm -hmm. hopefully with a with a, a lot of these feuds wrapping up hopefully we'll see them pull out all of the stops and give us like really really good matches and stuff so um I, i'm excited and thank you guys so much for joining me on this this day without matt i think we've 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 kind of gotten through it um i got the pictures up uh you know you did it I did, it. I did it. I did it. Yes. Yes. Um, it was so great having both of you here. Uh, you know, I love podcasting with you guys. So uh, first up, Chappelle, what do you got going on? Um, well, uh, generally just bouncing around from place to place, trying to figure things out. Normally that's kind of my life. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> as you, as you know, Mari, uh, but I think, uh, you know, I'm still on post show recaps talking about the walking dead. Um, mm -hmm. we're say we haven't recorded our finale podcast yet of this, uh, recent season of fear, the walking dead, but it's coming. And so, uh, that's going to be a good time. Myself, AJ Mass, Jessica Lee, Josh Wiggler, all hanging out doing that, um, every week 
for you know until the end of time because that's what the walking dead does um mm -hmm. also i plan on joining um my co-host here it's like you know to talk about the floor is lava and rob i think Ooh. i have our guest so by the time this comes out oh, i think uh, our guest would have solidified that so we should be talking about the floor is lava on nothing but netflix um and then uh i think i'll be joining the bitter jurors uh to talk uh with christine and gia about their new uh series stan Uatu, where they're doing a survivor <laughs> event Uatu rewatch and so oh my gia god and I yeah, so Gia and I will be helping uh, helping out with that um, for the Voluntarily? premiere. Voluntarily, just the premiere, just okay. just the premiere. Um, even though Vanuatu is criminally underrated, um, mm. so that'll be fun too. And then I think soon I'll be hanging out with Gia on Silent Podcast to talk about um, Survivor and vibes and all that good stuff yeah. as well. Um, but I think that's it. You know, like I said, uh, not too much going on, but just bouncing around, trying to stay busy. All right, Rob, how about you? So I was tasked with um, I was supposed to come up with a tag team name for uh, you Chappelle and I Ooh, to okay. come on this podcast. Um, I've been thinking about it. All okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Mari, what okay. do you think of? Oh, God. Rappel. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. I thought R you were going to say the, the, the Eiffel Tower. H-A-P. Oh, no. <laughs> P E L L Rappel. I like that. I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Rappel, different meanings, you know, to run away. Mm -hmm. uh, like you got meaning. it, Mari. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rob, see how she does me? This is why I don't come here no more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Um, if we think uh, of more, we will let you know. Uh, <laughs> okay. Work in progress. Those what are my, some of my gimmick? favorite tag team. Uh, what, what's our music? The, what's your gimmicks? Oh, like, gimmicks? What was your, your tag team gimmicks? I think we, we come out as podcasters. Mm. We do. Except sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not a podcaster because but he might fire you... me, depending on the day. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's <laughs> our gimmick. Like, we're halfway through the tag team match. He just leaves me in there. Just like, mm -hmm. you're fired. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We'll workshop that. We'll we'll workshop that, and I, I, you know, we'll follow up on that. We'll follow. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? What else are you doing, Rob? Oh, the usual. <laughs> and we're closing out the Survivor 42 season. I've got some really fun Survivor interviews coming up uh, here on the podcast the next couple of days. Uh, another new season of Talking with T Bird uh, as well uh, is coming back, and then uh, all the usual stuff uh, at robinswebsite.com. Mm -hmm. yeah okay awesome and we did we did just get the premiere date for big brother 24 yes july 6th yes so that'll be rapidly approaching um preseason has already started unfortunately uh i've already had to block some people so mm -hmm. it, it it's full-on big brother season i feel like so um i'm excited about that uh as for me you can find me of course here with the lovely matt scott Every week, breaking down wrestling on the Wrestling Rehab Up. And um, uh, me and Sarah Carradine bring you True Crime Tuesdays with a crime scene on RHAP where we break down different um, documentary or docuseries or true crime properties and we give our ratings and we watch it. So maybe you don't have to. Uh, we just dropped the episode with the amazing Sasha Joseph. Um, reviewing the docuseries from Hulu called Keepers of the Ashes, um, where uh, Kristen Chenoweth, executive, produced this um, docuseries about three little girls who were tragically murdered at a summer camp. And she effectively made it about herself. So oh. um, <laughs> go check out a crime scene and listen to it. Maybe you'll save yourself some time listening to us instead of watching that. So um, you can go to robhasawebsite.com slash crime feed to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to Crime Scene RHAP. And you can you can um, follow Crime Scene on Twitter, um, Crime Scene RHAP. That's uh, C-R-I-M-E-S-E-E-N-R-H-A-P on Twitter. You can, of course, follow me on Twitter uh, at Mari Talks Too Much. That's to like the number two to follow everything that I am doing. Um, next week on Crime Scene, we will have the wonderful Asia Welsh and we will be discussing Death by Ice Cream. So if you're oh. interested in that, again, 
you know, subscribe to find out what that, that means. And, um, our wonderful, my wonderful co-host Matt Scott is not here. Um, however, he does have a new project coming out called the pride has spoken. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, it is an exciting new project um, created by Grace Leader, Matt Scott, and Evie from um, Survivor 41. And they're here to talk um, um, about celebrating um, LGBTQ plus I IA plus survivors. Each episode, Evie will have conversations with the LGBTQIA plus survivors to talk about their experience on the show. Um, the first episode features uh, the wonderful Bryce Isaiah, baby boy, will be on the first episode. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know him. Um, <laughs> and, and he was fired up in the first episode. Oh, I haven't. I can't wait. I, I haven't got a chance to listen to it yet. Uh, we are also here from RHAP podcasters along the way. The first episode features a conversation between Matt, Grace, and Evie on how the series came to be, why there is such a vast community um, of LGBTQIA plus survivor fans. Um, make sure to subscribe by going to robhasawebsite.com slash survivor feed so that you don't miss any of the episodes um they're also selling t-shirts they got merch they got merch and the merch is cool we need merch um <laughs> they're selling uh the pride has spoken shirts which are available at rob has a website.com slash pride shirt all those proceeds will go to uh, support gender bender an organization that provides advocacy education and support for trans and gender non-conforming people in the southern united states Wow. And I'm I know Matt is probably like so excited that that's finally dropped. So go support him um by uh subscribing to that, listening to that and following him on Twitter at Matt Scott G W. And whew, of course, it is the first of the month. Um so go and subscribe to the Patreon. What are you doing? Like why why are you here? Did you are you still mm -hmm. not a Patreon? A patron? A patron? We're going to work on a lot of uh, fun uh, events for the patrons in June. Uh, there's no Survivor or Big Brother uh, just uh, at this moment. So uh, we're really trying to take this time and do some more activities uh, within the community as uh, we get ready for Big Brother and uh, talk a little bit more about Survivor that just finished up. You heard that from the big boss man himself. He said, sign up on June. Do mm -hmm. it. Go to mm -hmm. patreon.com slash RHAP. Become a member today. All right. Yeah. So for me, Rob, Chappelle, and the wonderful Matt Scott, remember, wrestling is for everybody, but not all wrestling is for everyone. We will see you next week. Bye. Throw them up, lay it down, just like Matt Amari. Wrestling liver half up is going to make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party. Mula Rig Flair, huh? Showing out like Bianca Belair, huh? Best podcast, flush it in the air, huh? From the rings, and we win it, don't care, huh? No cap. Throw them up, lay it down, just like Matt Amari. Wrestling liver half up, it's gonna make it sorry. Feeling like the rock, cause I'm driving the Ferraris. And we coming every week, and it's feeling like a party.